Every single type in Pokemon Pocket has a particular theme, and we're going to go over the theme, the strengths, and the weaknesses of every type in the game. Fire is the attacking type, the aggro type. Fire Pokemon are designed to outdamage Pokemon of every single other type. They are the best attackers in the game, full stop, and that is their theme. We don't just want to build a deck with every single fire Pokemon in it. We want to pick a particular part of best attackers in the game and focus on that particular part. What we need is a theme maker card. Blaine is a theme maker card because it takes the idea, the overall fire theme of we are the best attackers and focuses it down into we will attack faster than you. We will attack as fast as possible. We will destroy your entire deck before you can draw your good cards or play any of them. Blaine empowers cards like Rapidash, a stage 1 Pokemon that only needs one energy to deal 40 damage, and the incredible Ninetales, which only needs two energy to deal 90 damage. When combined with Blaine, it goes up to 120 damage and can one-shot Pikachu EX. That is insane. Also, remember, the 90 damage that Ninetales is doing is exactly the same as Starmie EX or a maxed-out Pikachu EX for only two energy. Why is Ninetales so insanely good? Well, it comes with a pretty big price to pay. When Ninetales attacks, you have to discard an energy. Sure, you could replace it on your next turn and just keep attacking, like reloading your Ninetales crossbow over and over, KOing tons of Pokemon. The downside is that you're not using that energy to power up your benched Pokemon. So a Blaine deck is focused on attacking as fast as possible, but it will lose if your opponent can power up powerful Pokemon in the back line. You win quickly or you lose quickly, but you will be the fastest attacker in the game, guaranteed. Now, that's one way that fire is the best attacking type. With Blaine, we can attack quickly, but what about attacking betterly, more powerfully, with ultimate damage? There we go, I like that one. What about attacking with ultimate damage? At the time of this video, Charizard EX has the most powerful attack in the entire game, capable of dealing 200 damage. This will one-shot any Pokemon right now, guaranteed, and there's nothing stronger. But the problem is Charizard EX also discards energy when it uses its attack, and it needs a lot of energy to get the attack off. You'll see a similar but weaker version in Centiscorch, which does 130 damage for 4 energy, discarding an energy after you use it. A lot of fire Pokemon have you discard energy because the idea is you do an ultimate burst attack, but then you're a little weaker, so you can't, you know, power up Pokemon. So how can we enable Charizard to do maximum damage? We need a different theme maker. While Blaine is the magnifying glass that turns power into attack quickly. Moltres EX is the magnifying glass that turns power into most attack damage, or ultimate damage. A Moltres EX deck will help us get quick energy onto our fire Pokemon that require a lot, like for example, Charizard EX. I could talk all day about different fire strategies, but they all have one theme in common, attack better than anyone else. If you're building a fire deck and it can't do that, it might not be as strong, and that's why themes are important. But we've already covered two fire deck theme makers, so let's talk about some other types, like the dark type, which is very fun because dark type has the theme of mischief and card combos. I really love the idea that the dark type is so focused on card combos, as well as messing with your opponent, which I feel like is a very dark type thing to happen, right? One example of a great dark type card combo is Weezing, Koga, and Arbok. You can put Weezing onto the field and poison your opponent. Then use Koga to remove Weezing from the field and basically heal any damage that was done to it. Your opponent gets no prize point and you get a free switch into Arbok. Now Arbok can attack 
preventing you from retreating. So you're poisoned, you can't retreat, you've taken damage, and you will keep taking poison damage every time the turn order switches because you're not allowed to retreat. It's such a vicious combo that I feel is perfect for the dark type. Another combo is to use Weezing to poison, Koga to remove the Weezing, and then bring in Mach, who will hit even harder because your opponent is poisoned. I can't really think of a magnifying glass card for the dark type, but that's because it doesn't need it. It uses a bunch of cards together to create combos that put your opponent in a tough spot. For example, although these cards aren't necessarily as good right now, the female Nidoran can summon the male Nidoran to help you evolve them both. And then the female Nidoqueen Queen can get extra attack power from the Nidto King on the bench. And the Nidto King can poison Pokemon to make Mach more powerful. And they all combo together. Understanding that the dark type Pokemon are individually weak, but are strong when they execute combos and sabotage your opponent with fun status effects, you'll be able to build a much stronger dark type deck. But what about the electric type? which is supposed to be the best type in the game right now. Why is it so good? This is because the electric type's theme is overpowered. Electric has the swarm theme. That's right, the electric type decks are all about swarming your opponent. And you probably already know what the theme maker card is for the electric type. It's Pikachu EX, a card that gets extra damage for every electric type Pokemon you have on your bench. Makes sense, right? It's all about swarms. But this is why the electric type deck is so overpowered. It's not just Pikachu EX, it's every single card. You see, the swarm idea is all about having a lot of basic Pokemon, or easy to evolve stage one Pokemon. Just having tons and tons of Pokemon on your bench at all times. This means that if your opponent tries to Sabrina you, you're not at all worried. You have plenty of Pokemon you could switch in, and many of them have one or zero retreat costs. Electrode, for example, is a zero retreat cost card that does a sizable amount of damage for two energy and is not an EX Pokemon. Electric decks also have tanky basic Pokemon to help your swarm, like Zapdos EX and regular Zapdos, which can do significant damage and tank. The problem with a swarm deck is it's just too good, because low retreat costs means you can constantly switch your Pokemon, your immune-ish, to Sabrina. You can bring in any tool for the job you need. Like, for example, do you need a RNG coin flip paralyzer card? Card, throw Pinchurin in your deck and you don't have to change your strategy at all. You don't have to worry about combos. You don't have to worry about drawing the right evolution. You're basically free of most bad luck in the game and you can do whatever you want whenever you want. Making the theme of Swarm probably a little bit too powerful, which is why the electric deck is number one right now. That being said, I do predict, and future viewers tell me if I was right or wrong, that the electric type will become weaker over time. This is because the idea of swarming will actually not be unique once new cards are released for other types. Once we get more zero retreat cost cards or powerful basic Pokemon in other types as well, they will be able to do what the electric decks can do. For example, water type already has Starmie EX, a powerful zero retreat cost card and does quite well with Starmie. While electric types focus on swarming, water types are a little bit weird. They focus on building up power. Lots of different cards in the water typing will have additional effects or do additional damage based on having extra energy. For example, Lapras and Blastoise will do more damage if you have more energy attached to them. Additionally, the water type is famous for Greninja, a card that is a stage 2 card. It's not that strong, but it can do damage from your bench every single turn, making it one of the most powerful late game cards in the entire game. Can you imagine how strong it is being able to attack your opponent's bench from your bench? and that not even counting as your attack for the turn. Greninja is awesome, but all of the water cards require you to spend a lot of energy to get their cool effects, and their attacks are not particularly energy efficient. This makes the water deck very heavily reliant on the theme maker card, 
Misty, which is, right now, the only way to get more energy onto Water-type Pokémon. Misty is one of the most hated cards in Pokémon Pocket for being very RNG, and whether you win or lose kind of depends on Misty right now. For this reason, I imagine Water Pokémon and Water Decks will eventually get more ways to add energy, better designed ways than Misty, which will double down on their theme of being a powerful late-game deck. We have the ultimate power, but we need a million energy to make it work. It is kind of the theme of water. Grass has a very easy and obvious theme. Grass is focused on healing. You've probably noticed that Petalittle, Venusaur, Tangula, Erica, there are so many grass-centric cards that involve healing, more so than any other type. This is, unfortunately, one of the reasons that grass is a very weak type, because their theme of healing is actually a weak theme. Healing is often either completely underpowered or completely overpowered, depending on the game you're playing. This is because it is impossible to heal a card that has been defeated. So, for example, if I attack your card and KO it with tons of damage, it doesn't really matter if, technically, had I been able to heal from negative health, I'd have positive health, but that's not how the game works. You're KO'd, so your ability to heal doesn't matter. In the future, I anticipate they will release tankier, that is, in the future, I imagine that they will release grass cards that have higher health. That way they can survive big attacks and actually get a chance to heal. But even then, I still think that healing is an overall weak theme. So hopefully they add new themes and new ideas to grass-type Pokemon. As of right now, Playing a grass deck is a little bit difficult, and most of the successful grass decks will focus on things unrelated to healing. Like, for example, using Executor EX, a card with one energy that can do a very high amount of damage per energy. It's totally off-theme, and the fact that the off-theme cards are good should give you an idea of why grass is weak right now. The grass type might be a little weak, but the metal type is very weak. And it's because at the time of this video, the metal type does not have a theme. There are not very many cards released for the metal type, and of the cards that have been released, none of them really have a very unique mechanic. Sure, Mawile can discard a random energy from your opponent's active Pokémon half of the time. That's pretty cool, I will give them that, but Firo can do that too. And then we have Melmetal, who's really the only relevant metal Pokémon at the time of this video. Metal Metal's Hard Coat ability reduces damage done by a flat 20 damage. This makes Melmetal an incredible Pokémon to get in the early game, because Farfetch'd will only be doing 20 damage a turn which is crazy. Meanwhile, Melmetal will be smacking you for 120 damage. If Melmetal is the kind of template for future metal Pokémon, we will probably see the metal type evolve as a Juggernaut type, Pokémon that hit very hard and are very tanky, but also have high energy costs, with little or unique ways to get more energy, like Melton can use a mass, but there's no other Pokémon that can power up Melton. Basically, Metal will become a deck full of cards that are kind of individually very tanky and can also hit hard, but not too hard. I don't know if that's true, and I think the fact that the typing just doesn't have many cards or an overall theme yet, and I'm just guessing, is one of the reasons it's not played very often. Let me know in the future if I was right about what the Metal type would turn into. But for now, let's go into a type that I know everything about, the Colorless type. The Colorless type does actually have a theme, believe it or not. The Colorless type is the Gimmick type. Every single Colorless Pokémon usually revolves around some kind of gimmick in the game. For example, Farfetch'd is a weak Pokémon, but has incredible early attack power, able to deal 40 damage for just one energy despite being pretty easy to KO and unable to evolve. Its gimmick is, I can attack fast. Now, that might sound like the Fire Pokémon's theme, but hold on. Farfetch'd is weak and doesn't really synergize with any other Pokémon, 
you're not going to build a whole deck of Farfetch'd. Usually, you'll throw Farfetch'd into a deck with other Pokémon that have a different theme, and Farfetch'd becomes the gimmick fast attacker of that deck. Confused? Don't worry about it, you'll get what I'm saying in a second when we start looking at some other examples. Kangaskhan is the tank gimmick. You throw Kangaskhan onto your active slot very early on, and it can tank 100 damage. Plus, it can do a lot of damage too, making it a good wall so you can build your strategy behind it. Aerodactyl does not do any damage, but instead sends your opponent's Pokémon back into their deck. Meowth lets you draw cards when it attacks, though it doesn't do much damage. But its evolved form Persian does a little bit of damage, yet it also deletes cards from your opponent's hand. Pidgeot, a stage 2 Pokémon, has an active Pokey power that is basically a free Sabrina you can use every turn. Every single colorless card, from the sleep-inducing Jigglypuff to the discard a random energy from your opponent's active Pokémon, Fero, has some kind of gimmick that you can slot into a deck of a certain theme to have a weird, fun option to make the deck do something cool. By design, the colorless cards are intended to work with other themes and other decks, which is why any energy can be used as a colorless energy in the game. Can you predict which type I'm gonna talk about next? Aha, 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 you got it, it's the psychic type. Psychic type Pokemon are the hero Pokemon. The hero Pokemon? Yeah, think about it. Mewtwo EX is the ultimate attacker, but your deck will usually focus just around cycling energy to use its ultimate attack as much as possible. Jinx is a Pokémon that doesn't evolve, and it tries to attack and defeat Pokémon with lots of energy attached, making it able to take out powerful Pokémon like Blastoise DX or Charizard when they have too many energies. Alakazam is a more powerful, evolved, stage 2 version of Jinx, also a big card slayer, taking down cards with lots of energies, and Gardevoir is like a hero support. It doesn't do anything on its own, but it has a really powerful ability that gives other people energy. Every single card in a psychic deck is designed to be a hero, something that does one thing really, really well. It doesn't necessarily combo with anything else. It's a one-card army that can win you the game by itself or with a little support. Psychic Pokémon deal some of the biggest damage in the game and can be very consistent and powerful damage dealers. That being said, some of the heroes in Psychic's repertoire are a little bit gimmicky. For example, Hypno is not a Pokémon you'd ever want to put in your active slot. Its attack only does 50 damage and costs 3 energy, which is really, really awful. We've talked about cards that can do twice that for 2 energy. That being said, Hypno's ability Sleep Pendulum gives you an effective 1 out of 4 chance of paralyzing your opponent. Yes, I know, it's 1 out of 2 chance to put them asleep, but then they get to flip another coin to wake up. Trust me, it's 1 out of 4 chance. Now, does Hypno do any damage? No. Should you ever attack with Hypno? No. Does Hypno combo with any other cards? Maybe one day. But for right now, Hypno is just a really cool hero support. You put it on your bench, it does what it does, and then you execute the rest of your strategy as if Hypno did not exist. And this is kind of the entire theme for all Psychic Pokémon. They're very powerful, and each card is a one-person army that can do one cool thing by itself in either an attacking or supporting role. They have some of the best damage in the game, though not quite as much as the fire typing. They can power up probably as well as anything else in the game, though not necessarily as well as the water typing. In theory, at the time of this video, even the water type Pokémon should be stronger than Psychic in the late game, in reality, unless you have Blastoise, Mewtwo can actually outscale a lot of water, which is why the Psychic deck is a little bit overtuned at the moment, and considered the second most powerful deck, with some people calling it even more powerful than the Electric deck, though I disagree. The reason it is too powerful is because it is stealing water's theme right now, 
of being a light game powerhouse, which water is supposed to be. But speaking of types that have too much theme to them, let's talk about a type that kind of lacks one. The fighting type. Fighting type Pokemon, quite frankly, are awful right now. They don't have any theme, they have nothing going for them, and there's no good reason for this because tons of fighting type Pokemon have been released. Golem does a lot of damage, but is stage 2 and damages itself. Plus it has a very high retreat cost. Onix does 70 damage for 2 energy? Nope. 3 energy, and has a crazy high retreat cost. Marowak EX is pretty good, but it's very RNG, and it's an EX Pokemon, and it can get one shot by Mewtwo EX. Heck, you could potentially beat this thing with a Pikachu EX. Uh, and this is a persistent problem. The fighting type seems to be lacking a theme. Honestly, it does sort of have one. Fighting type Pokemon tend to have more HP on average, but their retreat costs are usually abominably high, and they require way too much energy to attack. Their theme is slow and tanky, which is kind of bad because they're not tanky enough and they're way too slow, and the crazy high retreat costs, why does Rhydon need 4 energy to retreat? It's not even good! It requires 4 energy to deal 100 damage, while my Ninetales is doing 90 damage, Maybe even 120 damage for just 2 energy! Come on, Rhydon, why are you so bad? Unfortunately, the fighting type kind of has a negative theme, a penalizing theme. We are bad at retreating and have maybe 10 more health, and we cost 2 more energy to use. I can't think of a good reason to play the fighting typing right now. It clearly needs some work. If its cards are going to have insane retreat costs, they need to be better, in some way, than the other types, and they're just not. What I think the fighting type will eventually turn into is a type with, yes, high retreat costs, but actually high HP, still crazy high energy costs, but cool effects that make them kind of very, very powerful. Sort of like the psychic type, where every card is a hero, but maybe they're tankier heroes with less retreat costs. I think that could make the fighting type a little bit unique and good. So you're less versatile than the psychic type, but you have more power. You know, more tankiness and clobbering and cool effects. I, I, I think that could work, but in the meantime, it's just bad. Their theme is bad, and I don't recommend playing them. We only have one more type to talk about, and that's the dragon type, which is one of the coolest types in the entire game. Dragon types suffer from the fact that they cannot use dragon energy to power themselves. This is really weird and very unique to this one type. The only dragons right now, the Dragonite line, need to use water and electric energy to power up themselves. They don't have a dragon energy, there's no such thing. One benefit to the dragon type though, is that their Pokemon do not have weaknesses or are only weak to other dragons making them uh, effectively without weaknesses. This makes them sort of a king type. You know, the ultimate type, the best type. Dragon type Pokemon tend to have high health and do a lot of damage in exchange for higher energy costs. No weaknesses and their retreat costs can vary. The biggest weakness of the type though is having to use lots of different energy, which makes them a little bit more random whether you can use their full power or not. The ultimate form, Dragonite, the only powerful dragon we have right now, can do 200 damage and it's split among all your opponent's Pokemon, making it devastating, impactful, crazy. Dragon type is clearly meant to be the ultimate type, the best type, but it comes at some weird costs that you have to pay in order to use it. And that's every single theme in Pokemon Pocket. This was a lot of work, and if you really enjoyed it, let me know down in the comments. I appreciate all of the love and all of the constructive feedback. This is the Sneaky Dragon, and I will catch you later.